Once we've identified classes that we're going to use, one of the things we need to add are attributes to those classes. And attributes go in the middle section of the three section, and here we list, uh, you can call these attributes, properties, fields. Uh, these are really the information that the class stores. And so we didn't, weren't able, from the use case diagram, we didn't get any much information about these, but we might be able to get quite a bit of information from the movie's requirements and from our knowledge of the system. So if we look at the requirements definition, we see that movie info includes name, price, description, picture. All of these are attributes that can be added to the movie info. So name, and then remember I can use control enter to create a new field. So description, what were they? Name, price, description, picture, Price, description, so notice what the next one is. The next one is actors. So more than one in a movie, there's going to be more than one actor. Look at all the properties the actor themselves have. So here we need to decide, do I want this to be a complex attribute? of movies or do I want to have an actor itself be a different class? And it looks like this is enough information to create a class of type actor, which we didn't see, we didn't identify in a, in our um, other processes. So that's okay. Notice this is an iterative process and as we go we discover things that we need to add. So in my UML diagrams I'm going to go ahead and add another class and I'll call this class an actor. And we know that an actor has these properties, name, agent, birth date, and role in this movie. So I'm going to add those properties here. So now that I've created this class actor with those attributes, I come back and see that movie info needs to have actors. And so I can do that uh, and I just, I can call them actors. Now when you're going to have more than one or a container of an attribute, right, so I need a container for actors, use square bracket S and this helps us understand that this is a container. We're not deciding whether this is a list or a binary tree or an array or what kind of container it is, but we know we're going to be storing more than one. So what kind of container we don't have to decide that at this point, but we do need to decide that there will be more than one of them there. Okay, let's go see if we can find more things. Rental days, star reviews, I have added those as attributes. So we're able to find some of the attributes on that functional requirements. Let's go ahead and look and see if we can come up with some other things that we might just be aware of or I know that begin to think about things that we need to keep. So when we have a movie, think about a DVD. If we get a, a DVD in our system and so we have Bambi movies and we have 45 of them, 45 DVDs that are Bambi movies, how are we going to keep track of each individual Bambi movie. Well, a good way would be that, that each one of those DVDs have a specific ID. And, and so we could say, well, that's one of the properties of it, right? That's an attribute. The DVD needs to have an ID. Now, does movie file need to have an ID? Well, it might need an ID, an ID as well. And if that's the case, then instead of putting it in DVD, we won't do that. We'll put it up here in movie and say, well, whenever we have a movie, it's going to have an ID. We also know that it's going to need a location. And so when we look at location, are we going to need a lo what is going to be involved in a location? Well, we know a location is going to be a property of, um, we're going to need to actually have the location where it's going to be. We're going to need to know what I, what, sorry, right click and duplicate. Oops, that's not where I wanted it. There we go. 
So we also need to know uh, what ID, DVD is assigned to it. So here we would need the DVD ID, and that would tell us what ID has been assigned to it. Or if that's, uh, or, and we might need to know if it's available or not. Now, is available, let's talk about, does that need to be a property? Is this location available? Is that a property or is that an operation? All right, so we could have a property that is a bool that's available or not, or we could say, well, if there's a DVD assigned, then it's not available, but if there's no DVD ID assigned, then it is available. So we could do this as DVD ID has a value or is null, and then is available is actually a function and it just checks if there's a DVD there or not. So here we might be able to just simply say that's what it is rather than um, actually having a bool that stores that. All right, so now we can go through and think through our the things we know about the system and the uh, requirements definition and identify what kind of attributes do we need to have. Another thing that we can do is we can say, well, we have to have, for every time we have an operation, we need to have to have, we need the information that goes with that. So here, if I'm going to add a movie in inventory, well, then I need to have somewhere to store movies. So here we see that inventory might have movies, uh, many of them. And so we would put that as a container of movies. Now remove movies, so if we have a container of movies, we could remove a movie. If we have a container of movies, we can add a movie. Archive a record. Now here we see that we're coming up, what is a record? What is an inventory record? And so if we think through that, this is something new that we haven't considered. And so let's go back to our movies requirement and see if we can learn something about records. Uh, in inventory records. And it turns out that there are is information. Admin can update the inventory and they can add a movie inventory record. They can remove an inventory record. They can add a DVD to an inventory record, or add a movie file. So what is an inventory record? Well, from our understanding of the system, it, we understand that an inventory record is would be, for example, a Bambi movie. So if we have Bambi movie and we have 45 DVDs and 18 streamable files that are all Bambi movies, we would have one inventory record for Bambi. But we would have 45 individual movies. And so an inventory record is like a group of the same movies. So this one really is going to need its very own class. And this shows us that we missed something on our use case diagrams. And so as you see that, as you see something that needs to be added, you, you can add it to your use case diagrams as well because there was all that functionality that needed to be added. So here we have inventory record. And an inventory record is related to a single movie. Now, if we're thinking about Bambi as a movie, but that we have 45 DVDs. Let's fine tune our terminology so we can keep that clear. Because we think of Bambi as a movie, but we have lots of different copies of it. So if we go back and instead of calling this a movie, we could call this a movie item. And that helps us clarify what we mean. So we might have 45 movie items of that are all Bambi movies, but we only have one inventory record for that. So the inventory record might have several movie items. And again, this is a container, so use the bracket X. And so the inventory, instead of having many movie or movie items, it would have many inventory records. So, and this again would be a container of inventory records. So if we got a new Bambi movie, 
we would create a new movie item for this particular Bambi movie. We would add it to the movie record so there would be one more movie item here. And so instead of 45, we have 46. But we would not add an inventory record because we already had an inventory record for Bambi. We would just simply add one here. And so as we start to fine tune what is what is each piece, what each class needs, we find the attributes and the operations that it needs. As we go through this, we develop. So adding attributes helps us understand it better. Before we end, let's go ahead and talk about a customer account. What kind of information is going to be needed here in the customer class? So we have a customer class account, a customer account and we can add a charge or add a fee or the operations but what are the other things that we might have in a customer account we'd look here and see if what oh and here we have customer account right there in the functional requirement so we can simply use what we currently have there and that's how you figure out what kind of attributes are needed for each individual class